so much for tuning in. I'm Chris Hanukkah. You know, I know growing up, we're used to hearing these words. Dude, you're a nobody. Why would we hang around nobodies? Or if you're in school, you know, you, you know, you always want to be a part of that popular group, but they just decide not to deal with you and they kind of look down on you as a nobody, where we may end up getting discouraged by those words, nowadays we need to be encouraged by those words. Tonight on Resonate the Sound, Chapel Pastor McKenna Book deals with this subject, becoming a nobody. Kenneth, it's all yours. Go get it. Let's go resonate. Amen. God's awesome in this place tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. The title of my sermon tonight is Becoming a Nobody. Becoming a Nobody. I think it's very important in this day and age. So many times in our walk with Jesus, and as we go through life even, we feel one of two ways, I guarantee you. We either feel like we're too good or that we're not good enough to be used by God. If you've ever felt one of those two ways, lift your hands up. Everybody's hands should be raised because I know it's true. You either feel too good to be used, too holy to be used in ways that God wants to use you, or you don't feel good or worthy enough. I stand before you tonight, honest as can be, I have been both. I have, said, I, I have felt too good to serve down here on this level. Brother Ruben's nodding me because sometimes we think, what are we doing with the kids? What are we doing with this? What are we doing with this? We feel too good. And I've also been to the point where I say, God, I am not worthy of what you're trying to do through me. I am not good enough for you to use. You should really choose somebody else. We've all been there. In something big, in something little, whatever it is, we felt that way. And some in here tonight just straight up feel like they're nobody. They feel useless. They feel worthless. They just feel like they don't fit in, that they just, they don't get along with anybody, and they just, they keep going around through life, and they just feel not important. They feel like someone that nobody could ever use. They feel like a nobody. But I'm here to tell you tonight for just a few moments that that's exactly how we're supposed to feel. We're supposed to feel like a nobody. When we start to finally realize and we start to embrace the fact that we are truly nobody, God begins to do the work. I need you to get what I'm saying. I don't mean in your flesh, walk around being depressed and, and all this because you ain't got no, 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 no. I'm talking about in the spiritual realm. When we realize that we are nothing, it's not about us, that's when God begins to work. 
We have to get our flesh out of the way before God can ever do anything. Spirit and flesh do not ever, will never go together. They are complete opposites. You cannot have them the same. If you have your flesh in something, the spirit ain't there. But if you're fully filled with the spirit, then there is no more flesh. You can't have both. So to become a nobody, you have to completely remove the flesh, the thing that's so hard to get rid of, by the way. The reason it's so hard to get rid of is because we are earthly beings. Ourselves, our human nature, wants it to be all about us because that's who we are. The minute that we let that go, the enemy knows that that's when the Lord begins to work. So it's such a problem, and it's so, so hard to put our flesh behind us, to crucify the flesh, as the Bible says, because the enemy knows that once we do that, the Spirit begins to move, the Lord begins to take over, and it's not about us. So what does he do? He uses that against us. That's why we fight things in our flesh every single day. Whether it be addiction, whether it be whatever, they always attack in the flesh. Always. But we have to get it out of the way. We have to be tired of making it all about us so that God can come in and make it all about him. It's very, very important that we do that. But like Sister Tanea said the other day, she won't pray for you if you don't openly say, I'm tired of being in this situation. My dad, the pastor, is the exact same way. I've been taught that my whole life because if someone's not tired of something, they're not going to fully give it up. So if you're not fully tired of carrying around this flesh that wants to do everything against what God wants, if you're not fully tired of it, you're not going to get rid of it. It's a choice you have to make. Nobody else can make it for you. Pastor can't make it for you. Sister Shauna, man, she'll beat you up and whatever, but she can't make that decision for you. It's a mindset. It, everything starts in the mind. Joyce Meyer wrote an excellent book, Battlefield of the mind. That's where everything starts. That's where everything takes place. That's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind, our soul, and our body. Mind's first because it's the most important. It controls everything. Once we decide in our mind that we are willing to let go of our fleshly body, that's when God moves. But only then will God use you like you're supposed to be used. You can't expect to go out and do your full call and your full ministry if you're still holding on to parts of you. It'll never work. Sure, maybe you can get by for a little bit, but those who are truly in the Spirit will know that you're just trying to get by, and it's not going to work. Eventually, that time's going to run out, and you have to make a choice. Serve or not to serve? Fully or not serving fully, in which case, you're disobeying God, which doesn't line up with him or his word. And we sit here and we think, man, I don't, I don't really know about being a nobody. I was born to be a somebody. That's how I've been taught my whole life. I'm born into a family where you have confidence you walk your walk and you talk your talk. You better know who you are. Stand up for yourself. You were born to be somebody. And you are born to be somebody in Christ. But for Christ to completely take over, you have to first learn to become a nobody. People in the Bible. Man, you read that thing and you think, why in the world did God use these people? Why did Jesus, walking on this earth, pick out these people to use. Sometimes you're sitting there alone by yourself and you think, God, why did you choose me? I'm not worthy. I don't know why in the world you thought this would be a good idea. But that's who God loves to use. 
That's who God wants to use. Y'all know David? My kids, y'all know David? Y'all better know David. What did he do? No. David. (laughs) David killed Goliath. We know the big old giant Goliath. David got him some stones from the river, and he goes up against this big old giant, and he kills him with one stone. But he got five, but it only took one. Yeah. But the thing about David is scholars believed that he was about 15 years old when he went up against Goliath. If you read in the Bible, it says that you have to be 20 to even go and fight in battle. So he was definitely under 20. But if you study it out, though, how many brothers and everything he had, he, he's, scholars believe he's around age 15. Many people thought David was too young. Did they not? They said, you cannot do this. You are not qualified. What in the world? No, 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 no. And what does he do? He's the one that slays the giant that the whole town is running around acting crazy over. That's who God decided to use? A nobody, just a kid? Abraham. He was old. God made him a promise. He said, you're going to have a kid. He's going to be awesome. You're going to do all these things. And at 100 years old, Abraham still has no children. Many of us at 100 years old would probably just throw in the towel. We're done. No, 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 no. But when God makes a promise, he makes a promise, and he's going to stick to his promise. His promise always stands. Amen? But many thought Abraham was too old to do the Lord's work. People thought David was too young. Abraham was too old. Elijah was suicidal because Jezebel wanted to kill him. We all know that story. Jezebel sends a warrant out. I want your head, pretty much is what it says. She wanted to kill him. So what does Elijah, the prophet of God, do? He runs and hides in a cave. And he prays a prayer that basically says, God, I want to die. A prophet of the Lord says this. He was suicidal, but God still used him. Joseph was abused by his brother, sold out into slavery. We know that story. And then he ends up being king, saves all his brothers. Man, isn't that awesome? That's who God decided to use. Job went bankrupt and lost everything he had. God gave him back twice as much. Moses had a speech problem. He had a stutter. He had a temper. Any of y'all have a temper in the house? That's me, Sister Shauna. That's right. But God used Moses. But we sit back and think, God can never use me because of what I've done. No, 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 no. Gideon, he questioned and doubted God. Samson put love and pride before God. Samson was a crazy one, wasn't he? And we sit back and we read the story of Samson. I know I've been there, and I'm thinking, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? God give you this strength, and you're just going to go, and you're going to give up your secret, pretty much, the thing they tell you never to do. And she chops his hair off. He loses all his strength. We know the story. And we sit back and we read this, and we're like, what were you doing? What were you thinking? That's us. We do the same stuff every day. But it's a lot easier to read these stories from thousands of years ago and think, man, we're so much better today than they were back then. Rahab, she was a prostitute. The Samaritan woman was divorced. Jeremiah was young. Jacob was a cheater. That's literally what his name meant. Jonah We know last week he ran from God. When God taught him to go, he went the complete opposite direction. Naomi was a widow. Peter denied Jesus three times. Another one of those stories where we look and we think, man, I would never do that. But we do it every day. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus, who climbed the tree, hello, Ariana. Zacchaeus. 
He did. He climbed the sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. Yes, he did. But he was really tiny. He was small. And he was money hungry. The disciples, the 12 people on this earth that were hand chosen to walk with Jesus and to serve him, fell asleep while praying. And Paul was a Pharisee who persecuted Christians before he became one. We look at these people and think, wow, they did some crazy stuff. But it must be different that God used them. It must, it must be different. No, 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 no. God used the misfits. God used those who weren't worthy in our eyes. God used the nobodies. Those are the people that he chose out of everybody on this earth. He knew they would fail. He knew what they would do, but he chose them anyway. Tonight, he chose you. He uses the nobodies. Romans 8 and 28, we all know this verse. It says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Not our purpose, not anybody else's purpose, but his purpose. All things work out, no matter what, but only for those that love God. We forget that part of the scripture. We think we can go out and sin and do this, this, and this, and this. No, no, no. It's for those that love God. He has a purpose for you. He's called you for such a time as this. He had a purpose for the nobodies. He has a purpose for you. Well, McKenna, I just don't know what my purpose is. I've been there. I've been there. It's easy to be there because you feel like you're just going through this obstacle course and you don't know where in the world the end is and you don't know how to make it out and you've done, you've tripped and you fell and you don't know what to do next. I don't even know what my purpose is. I don't even know how to get there. Keep going. It's just around the corner. Believe me, when you start to get there and you start to feel like you're about to give up, there he is at the end and he's reaching out his hand and says, I have a purpose for you. I've called you for such a time as this. I've called you to stand out, to be peculiar. So many times I've heard kids in ministry grow up say this all the time, I just don't fit in at school. I just don't fit in over here or over there. I just don't fit in. That's because God called you to be a peculiar person. He called you to be different. He called you to be unlike anybody of this world. Be in the world, but not of the world. Let your light so shine. When a room full of darkness, yeah, you're going to look different. Because your light is shining when theirs is so dim. If you ever feel like you aren't worthy enough, you have to remember that Jesus used a bunch of flawed people to share hope to a flawed world. And this world is flawed 100%. But what are we going to do about it? It's up to us. It's up to the church. Not just resonate, but the church as a whole. To go out. To change the world. To build his kingdom higher and higher. God doesn't always call the equipped. But he will equip the call. That's so important. Because I know when I first, when God first revealed the first part of my calling to me, I said, God, I'm not qualified. I'm just a kid. The first part of my calling, I, I had to lead praise and worship. I was 16 years old. I was on the praise and worship team when I was 13, but I, we just sung back up and all that. I didn't, I didn't even really know how to sing harmony at that point. And an opportunity arose, 
And I was thrown, and they said, you, you're the praise and worship leader. 16 years old. I said, God, I'm not qualified. I'm just a kid. I don't know anything about anything. I'm just a kid that likes to sing. No, no. You were created for such a time as this. You will feel unqualified. The times when you feel unqualified, you better know that you are qualified, and that's why you feel that way. If you step into something feeling 100% confident and 100% like you got it, that's when you are in your flesh and you're not allowing God to take over. If you have it all together, you're in it for the wrong reason. It's those moments when we feel unqualified, like we're not worthy to do it because we're not. He is. That's when we have to realize I crucify the flesh, forget God, for, leave me out of it because I am unqualified, but God, you're more than qualified. Train me. Equip me. That should be our prayer every day. God, equip me for what you're about to do in me, for where you're about to take me. I've said it time and time again. I've spoke over this church that we're ready to grow, and man, I'm ready to grow. But we're in a season right now before the growth hits like that because it's going to hit like that. But we're in a process right now where we're just steadily growing because God is trying to equip us. God is trying to train us. God is trying to make us nobodies so that he can be everybody's everything. Because when we get up here to do it for us, we're in it for all the wrong reasons. It has to be him. He will equip you because he's called you. No matter what you've been through in this life, remember that that same power that conquered the grave lives in you. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking too. That song's always in my heart. Sister Jessica sings the house down with it. But that's true. That should be true in our lives. If he walked out of the grave, why am I still in mine? I'm supposed to be Christ made me in his image. Walk out of the grave. Walk out of that flesh that's trying to hold you back. That's when breakthrough comes. When we realize that we're nothing without him. Because we're not. Some of you have been told your whole lives that you'll never amount to anything, that you're no good, that you're worthless, you'll never do any type of good for anybody, don't know why you're even here, you're the one God wants to use. You're the one God wants to use, you hear me? You're good enough. Those are the ones God wants to use. The ones that feel like they were put on this earth just to take up space. And they don't get why they're here, why, they ha why they've been through everything that they've been through. It's for your purpose. God's training you. He's equipping you through all of that chaos and all of that pain that you've been through because it's going to make you better in him. He's making you a nobody so that you can be a somebody in him. You're who God wants to use. Those that have it all figured out and they think they know everything about everything, why would God want to use you? You think you know more than him already. It's those that sit back and they don't get why they were even put here. They don't get why this has to happen like this. God wants to use you. He wants to show you why. You were put through certain things in your life to birth out something new. He wants to equip you. But see, here's the opposite side of things. There's also people in here that aren't in it to be nobodies. They're in it because they want to be somebody's in their flesh. They want it to be all about them. It's never going to be about us. 
I don't care if you have a ministry with 500 students sitting beside you that you're training up, that you're, that you're equipping, and you're preaching to an audience of 30,000, it'll never be about you. The minute we think that it's about us, you've, you've got it all wrong. You've got it all wrong. Because I'm a nobody. And I'm just trying to tell everybody about the somebody who was Jesus. That's all I'm in it for. That's all I'm in it for. Who cares if they remember you in 45 years? Who cares if they remember you in 200 years? What's important is that they remember him. We're just the vessel. We just need to be a nobody. Trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved our soul. That song is powerful. It should change lives. It should help us realize that who cares about what you do? Because it shouldn't be about you. It shouldn't be about me. I should be standing up here as a faithful servant just telling you about somebody who changed my life. That's what we're called to do every single day outside of these four walls. What good does it do to only talk about Jesus when you're right in here? These people already know. That's why they're here. And yeah, people out there know about Jesus too. But what has Jesus done for you? Who is Jesus to you? What are you showing? We get it in here. They need to get it out there. It's time to become a nobody. To crucify the flesh and say, God, I'm done trying to be in it for me. God, I want to be in it for you. And I believe I'm talking to saints in the house tonight who've been in it forever, but sometimes we get sidetracked. Sometimes we make it about us. Sometimes we get the big head and think, wow, look at, look at all this stuff that we're doing. It's not about us. So tonight I challenge you and I mean, I truly challenge you because I believe like this is where growth starts. You want to grow? Become a nobody. Forget yourself and go out and tell everybody who Jesus is. I challenge you to not. Don't leave like you came. Be different. Be a nobody so that you can tell everybody about him. I challenge each and every one of you to realize that you are worthy. So what you did that 20 years ago? So what you did that two hours ago? If you ask forgiveness for it, he forgave you. He says he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. If he doesn't remember, why do you? Let it go. Step in to who God is making you to be. Step into that new identity. And God's going to use all of that to make you better. It's going to equip you. That's the training you have to go through. Hi, everyone. Cornbread Chris Heineken here, of course, representing Resonate Sound and Resonate Church. We do want to indeed say thank you so much for allowing us into your homes, 
for allowing us to church no matter where you are. Syndication, YouTube, simulcast, or just anywhere. Thank you so much for your support each and every week. Now, you're saying, hey, Cornbread, hey, Resonate Church. No, you guys have blessed us so much, but we want to turn around and bless you through the worship, through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Here are the four ways in which you can resonate your giving. And here they are. Number one, one of the ways you can do it is by joining us live right here at 418 County Road 4021, right off Highway 1 and Stadium Boulevard, right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, during our worship experiences. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights, our chapel youth service at 6.30. That's where to do it. Option number two, online. You see that tithe link right there on your screen? All you have to do is just go to that tithe link and you know, follow the directions and you can resonate your giving online through that, the tithe. All you gotta do is just make sure you follow the directions and all of it right there. That's option number two. Option number three, your cell phone. We all got one. So, hey, you wanna resonate your gift using your cell phone? Text the word GIVE to that number, that 501 number that you see right there on your screen. Something called text GIVE and just follow the instructions right there. Option number four, mail it. If you wanna mail your contribution to us via check or money order, you can do it with the address on your screen. But let us specify this. If you're doing check or money order and you're sending it to us, please make all checks and, and money orders payable to Resonate Church. I repeat it. If you're sending a check or money order, please make the check or money order payable to Resonate Church. Those are your four options on which you can resonate your giving. And for more info, go to our website, resonatechurchar.org for all the details. Hey, Tyler, what up, man? Hey, cold friend, what's happening? Oh, man, no thing, but I'm barbecue wine. <laughs> hey, I'm so in my wig. Thanks to Resonate, though. Resonate is bumping every Every Sunday, Wednesday, it's for everybody. Come join us. 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Come resonate. Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Wednesday. Chapel Wednesday, 6 30 p.m. We can't wait to see you join us. 418 County Road 421. It's right up Highway 1 the Stadium. And until we see you at resonate, show love and give peace. Resonate like Jesus! Jesus. this as encouragement and not discouragement. Here it comes. You're supposed to feel like a nobody. Because the days that we feel like a nobody are the days where God uses us the most. It's throughout the whole entire Bible. God took a lot of nobodies and used them for His. His purpose. His glory. His plan. You know, there's a you know, they play it on the Christian radios and all that. You know, and the song says, I'm just nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save my soul. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but this is actually that's actually a little bit of a page out of the song that came out in the late 80s that springed into the early 90s by the Williams Brothers. And that song says this, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. In order for God to move in you, Get your flesh out the way. 
the fact, get yourself out of the way. God can't move if you are literally blocking traffic. Especially spiritual traffic. God will only move in those that open themselves to Him. Those are the nobodies. You know, Pam Holders uses this quote that she says all the time. Is that God, you know, will God will never call God of course God called the equip will never call for the equip. But he always equips the call. I'll say that again. God always equips the call. Don't call for the equip. But he always equips the call. You know, God chose you. You know, and, and I'll, I'll, I can speak to this because, you know, growing up, I was an outcast. No, I was looked down upon by churches, by friends, even family members. I can speak to that personally. Because everybody wants to keep up with Joneses, but nobody wants to be different. And I was one of the only ones who stood out. God calls you to be different. That right there, whoo, I will shout all the days. God called you to be different. When people literally say, hey man, you're nobody. Instead of being discouraged and getting upset, smile, tell them thank you for calling them a nobody. Because when people call you a nobody, and when you look at yourself as nobody, look at yourself as the opportunity, the open opportunity that God can always work right inside of you. Become a nobody. Because when you become a nobody and nothing, God becomes your everything. God, thank you so much for letting us resonate your sound. Thank you at home for watching. For our senior lead pastors, Brian and Carmen Allen, for our entire staff and everyone, we resonate. I'm Chris Honekin. We said to you, show love, give peace. Oh, yeah. Resonate, Jesus. We'll see you this Thursday night. Oh, yeah. Got a little something to be thankful for. We will be in the month of November this Thursday night. We, we indeed pray you join us. Until then, we'll see you then. Have a good night, everybody.